you are watching Over the Back Fence, a conversation among neighbors. I'm Susan Laux, the Director of Neighborhood Falmouth, and this is a Neighborhood Falmouth production. Today, our conversationalists include Marion Bihari, Tom Sabara, Grant Willis, Jackie Pratt, and Mary Pat McKenzie, and, and me. Um, our first topic today is memories of old time Falmouth. So, you know, one thing that really kind of bothers me is when I see um, the bumper stickers on cars that say, wasn't Falmouth nice? And I just think that is like the meanest, mm. snarkiest thing to say, because I think Falmouth is great right here, right now, just the way it is. But for sure, I mean, I've been here for 20-ish years, and it certainly has changed a lot in terms of building and turnover of shops and things while I've been here. But Abby, who's, um, did anybody grow up here? Grant. Grant. All right. So you're going to lead us off, Grant. Tell us about how uh, some, some big changes that you notice or some big memories you have of Falmouth, uh, Falmouth of your, your of your. Um, well, right now the town has about 33,000 inhabitants. Um, in the 50s, it had like 7,500. So right. the town was about, you know, a fourth as populated uh, 70 years ago, 65 years ago, um, Mara Vista Avenue, off which I live, uh, did not go all the way, obviously, to Route 28. It made a 90 degree turn. Otherwise, you drive into some trees because Mara Vista Avenue extension had not yet been cut through. Now I mm -hmm. live on it. I used to live on the other end of Mara Vista. But uh, uh, Catherine Lee Bates Road wasn't here. Um, the, uh, God, I think I made a list once of all the uh, stores in Falmouth as of 1953. I went to an old Falmouth Enterprise, copied down all the addresses and found out what they are now. And some of them are pretty cool, but unless you've been here since before the beginning, like I have, uh, you probably won't even know some of the old stores. For example, Cucina Salmari used to be a place called the Francis Gift Shop, which was a very upscale stationary store. My aunt worked there and uh, I could go in and, you know, she'd give me a free little notepad and things like that, which I thought was great. Uh, where the... Uh, um, Blast from the Past is now next to uh, Karen's Main Street Art Gallery. Uh, used to be called Nick Sickness's Candy Kitchen, run by a Greek, T-S-I-K-N-A-S. And I know he was known for more things than that in film besides running this candy store, but I used to hang out there all the time. I'd ride my bike from Falmouth the Heights to, to get there because as you walked in the door, the candy, the penny candy was down one side behind a glass case. And then in the middle of the room was another uh, row of books, you know, for sale and other things. But if you went around behind, it was the comic book section. And in those days, the comic books in the late 50s uh, were pretty gruesome. Uh, Mad Magazine was just coming out, but already was, uh, there was a, a three, uh, three magazines done by the same EC Comics, Entertainment Comics, called The Crypt of Terror, The Vault mm -hmm. of Horror, and The Haunt of Fear. And they had the most grotesque stories, blood spurting out of people's heads. I loved it. I would sit there with these. <laughs> you, know, you have a candy cigarette and a comic book. There, and I'd be sitting there with you know, two in my lap and you know picking one out of the thing. And finally he'd come by and say, um, Grant, do you, 
think you might want to buy something today? Oh, oh yeah, sure. And I'd pick up a mad magazine because I couldn't take one of the other ones home. I'd get thrashed with a broom. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Thalmus in those days with the, you know, the wooden station wagons going up and down the, 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 the beach. I don't want to over romanticize it, but it was a, it was a, a snug little town and everybody knew everybody and the Thalmus Enterprise had a, a gossip section about whose kids were coming from where, you know, from t -tick. There was a section for T-Ticket and a section for Walk Hoyt. And, you know, everybody would say, uh, you know, my grandmother's coming down to uh, to see us all for Easter. And they'd print that in the paper. It was, it was a family type town. Um, it still is, but the families are somewhat different. Right. A, a lot of farms, right? Yeah, if, if you drove out towards East Falmouth, there um, were quite a few farms, there quite a few strawberry mm. fields, which are no longer there. Uh, if you went down Davisville Road uh, near the Emerald House. Um, but yeah, strawberries are everywhere. The Strawberry Festival in June is always a big, big deal. Mm. Uh, and how many strawberries can you eat and who picked the most? during the summer and we had the strawberry festival queen she'd get in the back of a you know 1955 pontiac and sit up in the back seat and roll roll down the main street and everybody would cheer but uh, there just weren't as many people it was more like a small um small tourist village uh, but uh, uh it was just as the brothers four and the casino were coming in. I used to go to the casino to, to watch the movies um, on the second floor. First floor was a restaurant, second floor you went up and you sat in this teeny little movie theater with the black walls painted and they had little white, um, little white lights in the ceiling. So you thought you were under the stars, kind of like a, a mini drive-in. And I went there to see the Saturday matinees you know, Two-Fisted Chair from Johnny Mac Brown, other goodies like that, and the cereals. I love the, the weekly the cereals that would change every week. For, but I, now I'm just talking about life in general, because yeah, everybody had cereals where they were, uh, movie cereals. Grant, was the carpet, where the carpet barn is now, was that a movie theater or a live theater? That was a Falma theater. That was where, that was kind of the Nickelodeon theater of its day. You got the more artsy, craftsy uh, film ah. there. It was about 50 cents more to get in than it was at the Elizabeth Theater. Uh, but like I say, that Elizabeth Theater where I got my first kiss was uh, stayed along the, the balcony of that place was a, was a, a long time memory for me. And I've seen the girl since then at a 50th anniversary reunion of Lawrence High School. Um, and uh, you know, she looked at me. She didn't recognize me. I said, Did "Okay, well, you, you gave me a life-changing event seventy years ago, <laughs> sixty-five years ago. I just thought I'd let you know. I'm still, you know, I'm still wobbling from that kiss in the back of the balcony." Oh, I love um, it. I yeah. love it. Oh okay. my gosh, I feel like I could ask you a million questions about this, but. Uh, we'll move on to someone else, and um, then we'll get some time to keep bouncing things around. Who else has uh, memories? Now, old time is all relative, right? So it's all yeah. <laughs> old time to you. And so anybody else have an a old time Falmouth memory to share? I have, I have one that kind of segues with, with grants. Um, I'm a wash ashore here in Falmouth. Um, I, you know, I, I moved all over the place for a while, but growing up, my parents had a, a cottage, and I mean a cottage um, with knotty pine walls and, and no insulation <laughs> in Dennisport. And we, we utilized that a lot. But when I, when I became 20, you know, we, every summer we'd come down, we'd come down with friends, we, 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 um, and 
when I hit, when, when my friends and I hit 21, what we would do is we would take over the cottage for a weekend. And we, if, if we had managed to uh, snag a, a, someone's car, someone's family car, we would take that. But if we didn't, we'd hitchhike <laughs> and we'd, we'd get ourselves up to Falmouth because we wanted to go to the Brothers Four or the casino. Um, that that was our, you know, that that was our goal. We wanted to, uh, we wanted to come up here for the nightlife because there wasn't much in Dennisport. <laughs> and, yeah, they, they, there, there was, there was hyenas, but um, the thing is that that that, that, that it, it, it seems as if um, that, that that the traffic was really bad. It was difficult to move around. We we just would always head up in this direction. And uh, see if we could. And we like we love Woods Hole because that was kind of a, an exotic, beatnicky, hippie kind of place for a bunch of college students to hang out. Um, but we, yeah. The the thing is, I I, I can remember um, Falmouth at that time. But it, a lot of the Cape was as Grant was, you know, sort of described it. And it was very much a, a summer place. That in the winter things were. <laughs> things were bleak <laughs> in the bleak midwinter. Things were things were very quiet. And even when I I first moved down here, it was almost thirty years ago. Um, that in the winter things were really quiet. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to watch sort of the influx of year-round residency. People who were retiring, people who were with families who were moving here. It it changed incredibly. I think. Um, and and it's it, and I I still think it is a really nice place to live. You know, I'll be forever grateful. It was a wonderful place to uh, to raise a, a as a single mom to raise a child. I suspect it's a really good place for any kind of family to raise a child. But it was especially helpful for me because there was still that neighborhood kind of feel, and so that things ha like if my daughter wasn't wearing her bike helmet. The guys from the corner cycle would call me. <laughs> when she was smoking a cigarette outside the library, one of the nurses that I worked with gave me a call and said, I saw your daughter. Smoking a cigarette. And uh, I said, so and she said, Well, I, I went over and I told her I was gonna have to tell her mother. And <laughs> she said, I'm holding it for someone else. That was that was so true. I remember saying to my oldest kid, if Andrew did something wrong and I was working at the market bookshop in town, I was like, if you do anything on Water Street and Woods Hole, I guarantee you five minutes later I'm gonna know. So don't do anything wrong. It yeah. was like the rule. Do not misbehave on Water Street and Woods Hall. Because you did. You heard it. Somebody called. Somebody said. What else do you remember, Mary Pat? Well, I we came here. My mother was ha, already had a place. So I came in the summers when my kids were like babies, uh, essentially, um, for part of the summer. And then we moved here in 83. So um, we, it was, it was still a small town. Again, like Grant said, you, there were strawberry fields all over East Falmouth and you went to the UPIX and, and I think at one point Falmouth might've been the strawberry capital of the country. It was, it was a big deal in the thirties and stuff. So it was, and my feeling was like, well, Woods Hole was like where the sixties went to die. I felt perfectly comfortable there. <laughs> I mean, even though I didn't want my kids to be too comfortable there. Um, it was just a really lovely place to be. It was like everything you really kind of needed was on Main Street in the 70s and 80s. There was a ne I needlepoint. So there was a Mrs. Weeks's wool shop. Mm -hmm. Easton's hardware was there. The Quaker Bonnet gift shop. All I mean, there was like that wasn't much you could need to buy that you couldn't get on Main Street. There was none, and it was fields over where the mall, where TJ Maxx and Walmart and all that stuff is. 
it was it was just nothing. It was a vacant field. I will say this though, George, the fish guy at what is now Shaw's, was the he was the fish guy in 1984, I think, because I swear I've been buying fish from him for all that time. Wow. That's a really long time. And only in Falmouth was that happen. <laughs> I love it. Christmas love tree it. store was where the pet store is now across from Stop and Shop in that little plaza by the mattress. Oh, uh -huh. that, was, that was one of the original Christmas tree stores on the Cape. Oh, no kidding. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So that was over 40 years ago. Wow. It was a wow. hot spot. How about Tom or Marion? Thoughts from either of you? Um, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Sorry. I don't have, I, we moved here 20 years ago. So by that time, Falmouth is fairly the same as it is now, different shops now. But um, <clears throat> I had a alteration lady who became a very close friend of mine who had grown up here. And she would tell me all kinds of stories. She died two, almost two years ago. And at that time she was 87. So she grew up here. Uh, but one of her fam favorite stories to tell me is she lived on Sandwich Road and her father had cows. And every day when she came home from school, she got on the cow and they would go across the, she would get on the cow, he, her father would take her across the street and they would go to where the cranberry bogs are now. And she would just elaborate on all these stories. And I, you know, and, and she lived here for a while, then she moved to Katuit, then she came back and she had actually an alteration store on 28 and Gifford Street. And we talked a lot about that, but she was a wealth of knowledge about what had happened here. Um, so I loved listening to her little stories, but I don't have any long-term because I've only been here 20 years, only. Only, right, yeah, you're just a newbie, a newbie. You're still wiping off the seaweed. <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. How about you? Right. Yeah, so I I, I uh, was listening to Jackie talk about going to the Brothers Four. Um, when we first got here in 1980, um, my friends and I uh, on the weekend would sneak down there and go there and go to the casino. And um, I, I met the, the Sweeney's who owned the casino and, um, and they became patients of mine. Um, and so oh. I, I, um, I saw them a fair amount and they, they were very friendly, very uh, lovely giving people. And um, so um, Mrs. Sweeney would call me up um, at work usually. And she'd say, hey doc, hey doc. He said, there's a band coming to the, tonight. You gotta come, you gotta come. They're awesome. They got these great horns. You won't believe it. They're amazing. <laughs> so I would, so of course I, I went. And uh, so I went and they would have three, three seats in the front row of the band. Now we're like, I'm telling you five feet from the band. And there's like 12 people in the band. And my ears are still ringing from these, these <laughs> events. And Mrs. Sweeney, who at the time was probably, I mean, you know, she seemed ancient to me. I was, I was 35. She, she was probably 70. And, and she's like jumping up and down, dancing and high five and the people in the band. And it was just, it was su such a trip. It was just, it was just really one of the one of the best memories, you know, really just a lot of fun. And then my other the other side of this when I wasn't hanging out in bars was uh, that my kids growing up here, um, you, you know, it was such a just an idyllic place. You know, they went to to uh, Mullenhall School and my wife, uh, bless her heart, would volunteer there and we knew all the teachers and they knew all our kids and, um, and, and, and that, you know, 
um, one of our members is was one of their teachers you know what what now and i i've driven her a few times and it's it's so awesome to see this woman after all these years and she remembers my how could she do this how does this happen how could she <laughs> remember these children she must have had thousands of kids over her, her career and she remembers these crazy details about what they did and and they're all true it's a, unbelievable it's just a testament to how special these first grade and kindergarten teachers really are. Um, and, you know, we should probably get Judy here because she she has a million stories and she has a much better memory than I do and about uh, what, you know, what happened. But the one that sticks out in my head at the moment was um, similar to what Mary Pat was saying that, um, Kristen, our daughter, uh, went, um, snuck out of school uh, with, when it must have been a sophomore in, in high school when somebody, you know, finally had a car and could drive. And so for lunchtime, at lunchtime, they snuck out of the school and they drove downtown and they were in some restaurant having lunch and oh. all innocent enough. But the librarian, um, at the at the school saw her downtown called up my wife <laughs> and, who, who went down there and nabbed her by the dragged her home by the ear you know <laughs> it, was, it was just what you said mary fat there was no yeah. there was no escape it really was a small town and yeah and everybody was into everybody else's business um and, and, and many of it much of it was in a good way and watched out for the for the other people's kids. I I'd send Andrew when he was going to science school in Woods Hall, and we live over by Tom on Katie Hatch Road. And it was like, you know, he was seven and eight, and I was like, just get on your bike and drive to Woods Hall on the bike path. I didn't even think about it. And then somebody would call me from the bookstore in Woods Hall and say he just went by, as in he got to school. <laughs> nice. I Before that. cell phones, it was the only way you knew where they were. Yeah, it does sound kind of idyllic, I have to say. So I moved here in 2000, and so I mean, I guess like Marion, you know, it's it's. Um, I think I'll, it's probably closer to what it is now from when I moved here than what it would be for you guys who were here 20 years before that, and and more. Um, I guess one thing I remember, um, I was living on Brick Kiln Road and there was a big farm behind me, which I think is still happening. Um, but I would um, zip down Sandwich Road and go take a ride on to um, 28 to come into town. And, and um, there was the tea ticket hardware store was there. Yeah. And um, and that was sort of like the old timey building that I remember. And I went in there a few times and I thought, this place is gross. But it was also like, this place is really old timey. You know, it's just like, you know, it was a rabbit warren and there was stuff everywhere. And so there was a part of me that really loved it too, because it was just it was so real and it wasn't, you know, people in uniforms with, you know, drawers of, you know, the perfectly organized screws and things like that. It was everywhere. And, um, and then that it got bulldozed and turned into Midas or, you know, you know, the sandwich shop or something, but I was sorry to see it go, but I was not surprised to see it go. But, um, but yeah, so that felt like um, sort of a hearkening back to, to an older time. And um, and I just one last question for you, Grant. Do you still have um, friends that you grew up with here, or people that you know that you grew up with? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's generally uh, restricted to the class reunions. If I see something in the newspaper, Lawrence High School class of '57, even though I did not graduate with the Lawrence High School because I went off to a private school uh, but uh, I still when they have the uh, things that used to be at the Nimrod all the time where I 
once was a resident, but the uh, uh, I see some of my old girlfriends and they look just as good to me as they did 60 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> the, everybody who's not moved away is, uh, has done pretty well. One of the reasons I came back to Falmouth after I uh, left New York City in the uh, in uh, 1983 uh, was because I just got my law degree from Brooklyn Law School and I really wanted to uh, to get going and I figured well you know if I go back if I go to Boston I'm gonna be you know competing with a lot of very good people but if I go to Falmouth hey let's see Chrissy Bullock runs the uh, Chevrolet place um, Barbara Van Ham is, is uh, an assistant bank manager over at uh, um, Security Federal. Uh, and I had a built-in client base. So I hit the ground running in Falmouth when I came back in, in the mid-80s. Um, and uh, uh, I, I, I got more involved with my friends then than I have in subsequent years. Uh, now, if there's a reunion, wherever they may be, I don't know if they're going to have any more of the class of 57, but, uh, you know, we all look at each other well, just like the time has has not intervened. Oh, hi, Barbara. Hey, you still, uh, you still wearing that crazy uh, set of earrings that you used to, you know, and it's just, uh, it just, it tell, time is telescoped in this town for me. Yeah. Because I, I see so many old things where the new things are. Um, and it takes me right back. Nice. Oh. I, I was going to say, um, kids, I don't think that's changed, Grant. Kids still connect. My daughter teaches in Natick, and there are two other teachers in Natick who went to Mullen Hall School with her. Oh, and <laughs> the other morning I was talking to her, and she goes, Hi to Hunter Greeley who came in and I was like, hi Hunter, because I taught him CCD, you know, and they're all middle-aged teachers now. It's, they haven't, that small town thing, I think is still very evident here. It's, okay. there's still a lot of cohesion. Of course, these are not kids who just graduated last year either, but. Where Mullen Hall School was, or is, um, to the right was, Back then, it was just called the village school. On the right, where virtually running down the length of what is now Hamlin Avenue was the Henry W. Hall Junior High, where I remember ah. my favorite teachers, seventh and eighth grade teachers. So Henry Hall's name, I guess, when they tore that down and made Hamlin Avenue, um, he got added to uh, Priscilla Mullen's name on the... Uh, you know, Miss Mullen was the bright red haired, uh, oh, I don't, don't want to call her Martinette, but if you ever, you know, passed her, you weren't wearing proper clothing in the hall, you know, she let you know. She stood up against the wall and told you why it was important to, uh, you know, always, you know, have your shirt tucked in and things like that. So, yeah, uh, Miss Mullen's name deserves to be in the school because she, scared all the students and uh, they all remember her. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, I red hair, I think it's kind of like, kind of like Susan. Nothing wrong with red hair. Um, yeah. All right. I think we should bring this conversation to a close, but it seems <laughs> like we have lots more to talk about on this topic. So maybe we'll revisit it in a part two. Thank you all for watching. This has been Over the Back Fence, a conversation with neighbors, and this is a production of Neighborhood Falmouth. See you next time. Bye.